Be a third down, a long one. Joe Hamilton. With time and a man. It's Des White, his favorite target. Midfield, it's a first down. Georgia Tech's offense is good, real good. Best in the nation, good. Up front, John Carmen at right tackle has won lineman of the week in the ACC three consecutive weeks. Des White averages over 30 yards a catch, and Ed Wilder is an important part of that offense. And it's Wilder leading the way for Philip Rogers. And on a first down carry, He's inside North Carolina territory to the 47-yard line. The Tar Heel defense is really struggling. Dead last right now in the ACC. This front four has got to put some pressure on Hamilton. They are very, very young. Peace, the only senior up front. Mercedes Perry, we talked about him, a good middle linebacker and a young secondary. Three sophomores in there. They have been tested and have lost most of those tests so far this year. Philip Rogers inside the 40. He's down to the 38-yard line. Well, they've run two counter trade plays right in a row. Little counters up inside trying to establish some sort of a, some sort of a running game. Mercedes Perry is down on the field with an injury. He had come out actually when run support had broken down on the outside. He'd gotten out very quickly to make the play, cut the running back off, but did not, must have twisted an ankle or something. Let's take a look at him if uh, we're going to see if uh, come look at it and see what he does here. You see him there, number 54 in the center of your screen. Getting outside after Sean Gregory. Just lose it in the turf, loses it in the turf, and good quickness, though. I hope he's all right for that UNC defense. Well, that UNC defense had an outstanding middle linebacker when this season started by the name of Brandon Spoon. Right. And Perry moved into that middle spot. Spoon injured, and Carl Torbush has lost him for the year. I mean, you talk defense and Carl Torbush. For 10 years, he was Mac Brown's defensive coordinator at North Carolina. And that was the Tar Heels calling card. They put a ton of guys into the NFL. 17 guys in NFL camps over the last two seasons, most of them defensive players. So that's obviously not good news that Spoon is on his way out. So or rather, Perry is on his way out. They're supporting his arm. It looks like, uh, obviously, not a leg situation, which is a big worry, but you see a lot of injuries to the wrist, to forearms. Now, you're right talking about Perry. He's a guy that when he stepped in for a spoon, the coaches didn't think, didn't really want to say he was ready. They felt that there was more prep time that he was going to need before he could step in as a starter. He was really forced quicker than he should have been, quicker than they would have liked him to, into the starting role. And he said basically he is the uh, basically the closest thing to a leader they've got on that defense. This may be the closest thing to a Heisman Trophy winner <laughs> right now in the game. Joe Hamilton is the highest rated passer and the nation's leader in total offense. He'll pitch it. And inside the 30-yard line, Sean Gregory. Quincy Monk made the stop, a nine-yard pickup. Gregory splits time with Phillip Rogers at the tailback spot. Yeah, it really does. A nice job by the offensive line. We're going to start there, led by John Carmen. He's one of the biggest guys you're going to run into out there. But doing a nice job of controlling that line of scrimmage, stringing out that UNC defense. Boy, this is a quick working offense as Hamilton trying to spin away from Quentin Savage gets down to the 25. Twice on this drive, Hamilton has brought the Yellow Jackets to the line of scrimmage and on a quick snap. So quick, I wasn't even done talking. Yeah. See that? But the UNC defense wasn't even set, and that's certainly one of the things they're looking to do. Keep these guys on their heels, keep them out of position, and boy, half a man of a, uh, off on a A lineman can really ruin a defense. You can see Georgia Tech uses an awful lot of formation. Hamilton to the air and incomplete. Des White 
made the cut and couldn't hold it. Well, here's today's Dell game solutions. If we take a look at it, Georgia Tech's offense. Stay balanced. They want to keep the run and the pass going, give them that kind of look, and keep their 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 errors percentage under 12. Now, what they do is they take penalties, sacks, turnovers, that sort of things, and they divide it by the number of plays that they had. That's where they get the percentage. If they keep it under 12%, they'll win. North Carolina, control Hamilton and limit big plays. Two very tall orders there. Uh, no one's been able to do that in the four times that Georgia Tech has played this year. Inside handoff, Sean Gregory down to the 22-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and about seven. Oh, we came into this game really hyping Joe Hamilton and what he had to offer this team. And right now he's starting off basically as the leader. You know, not throwing the ball, not really running with it, but, you know, calling the right plays. He makes a lot of audibles at the line himself. He wants to establish a running game before he unleashes. It is a very complex offense that he runs. He is not just an option quarterback. In case this is your first gander at him. Oh, he'll go down. No, and his feet still. Lost the ball. North Carolina, I think, has it. They do. The Tar Heel, Sean Woodard, who came in for Mercedes Perry. Woodard recovers the fumble. I tell you what, get some young kid off the bench who wanted a chance to start. You get a little excitement out of him. But that's one of the things the UNC defense has wanted to do is get the hits, get some hits on on, uh, on Hamilton. Now watch him. They blitz both inside backers. They come inside number uh, and made the hit, but didn't wrap up. One of the problems that, by the way, that the defense has been having, there Joey Hamilton with perhaps a wet ball not being able to keep control. North Carolina's first possession. Ronald Curry swings it. Algie Crumpler, the big tight end, and Crumpler is out across the 25 to the 27-yard line. Our Chili's offense, the starting lineup for North Carolina. The offensive line has given up 18 sacks, 13 in the last two weeks. Alan Mogridge of the right tackle is a guy that the coaches say must get better at pass protection. Out are Jason Peace and Corey Bailey. In are two freshmen, Sam Aiken and Chelsea Borders. They start at the wide receiver spot. Deion Dyer is Mr. Indispensable in this offense. And on second and short, they give it to Dyer. He's out close to the 30-yard line. First down, North Carolina as the rain starts again here in Atlanta. Georgia Tech's defense, they bend. They haven't broken too many times this year. Nick Rogers on the outside out of East Point, Georgia, just a sophomore. Matt Uremovich, the leader of this defense. He's a middle linebacker. They missed him last year. He was suspended most of last season. Jeremy Myers gets the start at the free safety spot, replacing Travaris Tillman, who is injured. And a good start for North Carolina. Second man through and still on his feet. This is Anthony Saunders. He's out close to midfield. A gain of 18. Well, that was just tenacity on Saunders' part. He found a little gap up inside, took a couple hits, and nobody wrapped up. And this has been the one of the complaints by a lot of defensive coordinators across the, na the uh, National uh, Collegiate League is that these guys are just not wrapping up. They're all trying to make the big hits, and they're not wrapping the arms. From midfield, Curry, little option. He has great speed, and he's inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. North Carolina coaches told us Ronald has to learn not to try to do it all himself. How did they accomplish that? Well, they, they're trying to find him some new weapons, some new targets. Uh, they're making some changes. They're moving some people in at wide receiver. You're going to see Chelsea Borders, a freshman. Sam Aiken, a, a freshman, who are both stepping in for Corey Bailey and Jason Peace. Kind of to get some fresh blood and also maybe to light a fire. Deion Dyer, the big fullback, inside the 35-yard line to the 34. But you want to know something? The Dyer is obviously their, their big man, the guy that they love to see run the ball. But even the UNC coaches told us, you know, their running game is tenuous at best. They don't really feel that it is that dominating a portion of their offense. But today, they seem to have come in not believing their, their own words and saying, let's establish a run game and see what we can do off of that. On second and five. A nice catch by Algie Crumpler. He is close to the first down. It's a gain of four. He'll be short by about a half a yard. 
But one of the things, too, when we talked to North Carolina, one of the ways to control Joe Hamilton is to keep him off the field. The less time he has the ball in his hands, the better off you are. And that's what North Carolina is doing right now with a nice sustained drive. Third down one. All alone is Curry. He'll sweep it himself. Has the first down and more. He is in. Touchdown. He stayed in bounds. Ronald Curry. Wow. Nice play. Beautiful play. Nice block on the outside to contain the uh, run support. Algie Crumpler, the tight end. <laughs> well, it was a nice block. It had a little bit more cloth than maybe was legal. Watch on the right side of your screen as Curry just takes off. There's the block. You see, and just Curry with that speed, even the Georgia Tech coach is saying he probably has more flat-out speed than even Joe Hamilton has. The extra point by Brian Schmitz is good, and all of a sudden, North Carolina is kind of spoiling homecoming, aren't they? A damp homecoming in Atlanta. And North Carolina, impressively, after the turnover, on third and one, it's a 30-yard run from Ronald Curry. He walked the tightrope on his way into the end zone. Des White. Out to the 21-yard line. Look at that one more time. Curry's going to come towards us. Watch the blocking. Everybody staying with their block. And Curry just outrunning the last two support guys on the outside. As you said, Rich, tight rope in that sideline and using his speed to take it in. He's an exceptional athlete. North Carolina has just, I guess, not yet been able to figure out how to focus that athleticism to moving the football. Hamilton's throw is broken up. Flags? No. Georgia Tech certainly wanted them. Errol Hood right there to make the play. And, you know, you had to figure that, that Hamilton was going to come out passing. That first drive of theirs was very conservative. They used the run game. But when North Carolina scored first, I got a feeling those Georgia Tech coaches are going, hey, time for us to get some points going pretty quick. Ah! On second and ten. Option. Hamilton's pitch. Philip Rogers to the 30-yard line. He's short of the first down. And that's one of the great things about Joey Hamilton on this option. He's running with the ball, and not, not only does he pitch it, but take a look when he pitches it. He carries the ball long enough to even make, be made contact by the defender. Still has the wherewithal to find his pitch man, get it out there, and get the extra yardage. Third down short. A lot of quarterbacks were just, man, their first sign of danger, they're getting rid of that ball. Hamilton still has it, and he's got the first down. He is 5'10", 189 pounds. Billy D. Greenwood made the stop. So what do you call that, like a quarterback sneak option? I mean, he basically runs a dive up, up inside, fakes it, and keeps it himself. That's what makes defensing this Georgia Tech offense so very difficult. Mm -hmm. The passing attack they run, Ralph Friedgen is their offensive coordinator, is a pro-style passing attack. But obviously, they do an awful lot of things with the running game as well. Hamilton's throw is complete, caught by White, and he's out to the 45-yard line. Flags are down. And yeah, we got a little face mask. He looked like, uh, I believe it was Tim Burgess out there making the hit, or Arrow Hood. And as they pulled, uh, pulled him down, got a hold of that face mask, and... So more yardage for Georgia Tech. Let's head to the studios and John Saunders. Here, Joe Hamilton, Hamilton and Georgia Tech on the move. Rodgers hammered and stopped. Sherrod Peace made the initial hit. Sunday night on ESPN, the Battle of the Bays. The Green Bay Packers, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on ESPN on Sunday. Then Monday night, Mark Brunel and the Jacksonville Jaguars head to the Meadowlands to take on the Jets. The 30th anniversary season of Monday Night Football continues on Monday. Oh. 
Second down 10. Des White in motion. First man Gregory and Sean Gregory inside the 45 to the 44 yard line. Now that, that type of play is so hard to defense if you're not getting penetration by your defense. You start off tackle and that ball just kind of bounces out to the outside. And he has the quicks, enough quicks to get it around that corner and have everybody chase. George O'Leary in his fifth season, tremendous year last year, 10 and 2. A win over Notre Dame in the Gator Bowl. Sorry to remind you, Bob. You know, you keep bringing that up, but I wasn't going to say anything. Third down. Wide in motion. Hamilton got his man, the quick hitter to Kelly Campbell. He's down to the 30. Quentin Savage made the stop. First down, Georgia Tech. You know, we've kept talking about Des White and how good this guy is, but the one thing we've got to remember, they've got some pretty good other wide receivers that take the pressure off. As a matter of fact, if you start watching Des White a little bit too much, you're going to get a pass just like this to Kelly Campbell. That's a nice contact in line, good separation and quicks. The acceleration is what gets him the, the, the pass, gets it thrown to him. He gets really good separation and quick acceler acceleration off of, the, off of that initial contact. That one goes nowhere as Hamilton ends up in the arms of Cedric Hodge. North Carolina has put a ton of talent in the NFL. First two rounds of the NFL draft last two years, six defenders have gone there. Mm. But Carl Torbush says that's a good news, bad news. The bad news, we lost the guys. The good news is if you come to North Carolina, there's a good chance you're headed to the NFL. He's got young guys who he thinks are just as good as the others. They just don't have a whole lot of experience. Hamilton. Tripped up from behind. Third, third down this drive. Hamilton's throw is caught, but not enough for the first down. Well, you know what I'm seeing in this North Carolina defense? I'm seeing something that this, the coaching staff has been trying to instill. First off, they're swarming. They're all getting after the ball. Secondly, they're tackling. And that has been the one thing that those coaches, for the Tar Heel coaches, have really felt very uncomfortable with, especially up front with the D-line. 40-yarder for Luke Manjay. And it's not that long, and it hits the crossbar. Manjay comes up short. North Carolina has forced a turnover and now a missed field goal. And so far, the Tar Heel defense is keeping the nation's best offense in check. It's 7-0 in Atlanta. Good kick. Ronald Curry and the Tar Heels, a 7 0 lead over Georgia Tech. A couple minutes left, first quarter. On first and 10, Saunders outside, across the 30, out to the 31 yard line. All right, let's get back out and take another look at our Dell Game Solutions, at some of these solutions these coaches want for their teams. North Carolina's offense, looking for better production out of the wide receivers. That's why we're seeing some of these freshmen stepping up and getting a look. Cut down the turnovers. They are last in the ACC, and that is a big stat. Georgia Tech's defense contain the guy who runs. Ronald Curry and force them to turn the ball over and punt, which so far is a workout. Straight ahead, Deion Dyer. Ricardo Wimbush made the stop. Short of the first down, it'll bring up third down and short. No, nope. the Tech's defense is not a big play defense. Right. Only three interceptions. They forced just four turnovers this year. Mm -hmm. And how many times have we called them to bend but not break? And that's essentially what North Carolina is doing to them. They're bending them with this continual running game, you know, which we didn't expect. I mean, they are really just kind of knocking away, picking up the first down, and in the same same stroke of the pen, keeping Joe Hamilton off the field. Curry broke him for a 30-yard touchdown run on the last drive. Saunders off right tackle has the first down. Matt Yaremovich made the stop along with Gunther Kreisen. Let's head back to the studios and John Saunders. John? John, certainly Drew Brees is front and center now in the Heisman race along with Joe Hamilton of Georgia Tech. 
It has North Carolina on first and ten going back to Anthony Saunders and he's buried. You know, it's one thing to try and get the to try and get the first downs and to establish a running attack, but they have to also try and get the pass game going too. Now, if all you're doing is running the ball, you're going to get that defense to start closing up, bring eight up eight, eight men up in the box, and go and attack the run game. Certainly, at that point you can start to pass, but it's better to get the balance. Curry has yet to throw it to his freshman wide receiver, Sam Aiken or Chelsea Borders. Play first quarter to the sidelines, and it's incomplete. And that was the freshman, Chelsea Borders. Couldn't hold it. North Carolina, though, happy after one quarter. They're on top, 7 0. The ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Homecoming of Georgia Tech. But the number eight Yellow Jackets are trailing North Carolina as we start the second quarter. Ronald Curry on third down and long. A lot of time for Crockwell, and it's incomplete and almost intercepted by Ricardo Wimbush. Well, you know, one of the things that, that from talking to the coaches yesterday that really stood on my, on my mind when we talked to Steve Marshall, the offensive coordinator, and he said that Ronald Curry makes hard plays look easy and makes easy plays look hard. There was, a, there was an example of the latter. A low line drive to Marvius Hester at the 16-yard line. Hester outside. Turns the corner at the 33-yard line. Georgia Tech, number eight in the country, gets the football when we get back. A lot of history in this old stadium. North Carolina and number eight, Georgia Tech. Joe Hamilton from his own 33. Philip Rogers. Out to the 38-yard line. Now let's take a look right now at what's happening and why this Carolina team is standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Their defense is very aggressive. You're seeing good penetration. They're really taking away the, the, the lanes for Hamilton to throw and to run. They're starting to tackle. One of the concerns that the, uh, U, the UNC coaches were worried about. Get the guys, they're, they're good at hitting, but they're not wrapping up and dragging people down. So far, they're blowing up a lot of plays in that Georgia Tech offense. Hamilton's throw is dropped right at midfield. Russell Matvey was the intended receiver. Clinton Savage. Well, that was the defender. Look at these numbers in the first two drives. Jeez. No points at all. They've been able to move the ball a little bit, but we haven't seen the wide open Joe Hamilton yet. It seems like they also are trying to establish some run. Uh, you know, that, so that threat still stands there. And I don't know what the field conditions are actually like for the players, but uh, they're really kind of continuing at this point. Hamilton to the sideline. That's oh. dropped. Ed Wilder. North Carolina holds again. And Georgia Tech is forced to punt. Jeez, and that, that, uh, and th this is one of the plays, and this is one of the throws that will indicate that Hamilton's got a good, strong arm to throw that out like that. But boy, you're not going to see a ball thrown any better right to the hands, right in the middle of your chest, and just have that ball dropped. Corey Bailey, deep for North Carolina. Dan Dyke. Bailey, drop the ball. Carolina gets it back. A huge sigh of relief coming out of Chapel Hill on that one. And Bailey saw gold coming, man. <laughs> he saw some gold coming down the your, pike. Your buddy Errol Hood on the recovery. Good awareness. A lot of guys, they get ready to, to turn and to make some blocks. But he caught that ball. Hood saw that ball out and dove in and make the nice recovery. It didn't get fancy with it. You know, sometimes guys try and pick it up and make the big play. In a situation like this, and against a team like this that can make some things happen so quickly, just get possession of the ball. They did it. Young Ronald Curry making just his ninth start as a collision. Dominique Williams, he's into the ball game. Out to the 15-yard line. 
They'll bring up second down in about six. Time now for the Aflac trivia question. This week's question. Georgia Tech is one of five schools in Division I that does not have the word university in its title. It's actually the Georgia Institute of Technology. Bob Gullick, name the other four for, for 50 points. I know you're going to ask me. Notre Dame. They dropped the whole university thing, not just Notre Dame. Wrong. You're not buying that, are you? No. Second down and six. Curry. Hit and drop. Craig Gathers. True freshman. Laplace, Louisiana. And Curry is down. You know, one of the things that Steve Marshall, North Carolina's offense coordinator, told us, he says, we are not getting our wide receivers open. And thus, that is why we're taking sacks. You know, he's got the mobility, but that was just a great play by Gathers at staying right in front of Curry and making the play. But until they get the receivers that can get separation and give Curry somewhere to throw the ball, he's going to get hit like this a lot. Take a look at it one one more time. Gathers is there, number 55, sees the bootleg. Direct line right into Curry. You could see him roll on that ankle as he made the sack. The other thing Marshall added was the inability to throw the football away. Mm -hmm. And that's something that a young quarterback has to learn. There's another young quarterback, Luke Heward, who's a good backup. He's a redshirt freshman. And it looks like he's coming into this ball game when we get back. Real concern for North Carolina. Ronald Curry on the sideline as they look to his ankle. And young Luke Hewards, who has a pair of brothers who are making a living as NFL quarterbacks right now, takes over. Third down long. Dominique Williams with a flag down at the nine yard line. There's a flag down back at the nine. Holding North Carolina. Georgia Tech may decline this because they're going to get the football on fourth down. Yeah, tough for a young guy to get in and, and take over a drive. There you see Curry. Let's take a little look at the, at the hit and see if we can see what happens. On the offense, Hildy has declined fourth down. It looks like he's got kind of bent over his ankle a little bit as Curry or as Gathers brought him down. Georgia Tech does decline the penalty as Curry gets attention to the right ankle. Schmitz, the punt. It's dropped. Oh. North Carolina has it in midfield. Flag down. I mean, talk about that's the way the ball bounces. That could have bounced any better for North Carolina. Jason Peace made the recovery. And we'll wait for the call. Holding Georgia Tech. And Carl Torbush and his Tar Heels have lost not only their starting quarterback, their starting middle linebacker. Rock in the on back, the road. above the waist, on the receiving team. And on top, 7-0. How about that? Bowles There's a look at Mercedes Perry. Down. Brandon Spoon right next to him is the guy that was injured a couple games in. They lost him for the season as well. Right, and, and it was Perry that had become essentially the leader of that defense. Now so far, Sean Woodard, Woodard has stepped in. We saw him make a play right after coming in, but boy, when you start moving that far down the depth chart, you can only hope that that youthful enthusiasm and excitement will pay off for you. Speaking of youth, Luke Cured now has some good field position to work with. Deion Dyer, the big fullback, rumbles down to the 41-yard line. His oldest brother is Damon Heward. He's Dan Marino's backup in Miami. His next oldest brother is Brock Heward. He's Mike Holmgren's number three quarterback in Seattle. But Luke Heward decided not to go to the University of Washington. He followed Mac Brown to North Carolina. And we're definitely going to see a different type of attack from Luke Heward than we would from Ronald Curry. Word from the sideline, Ronald Curry is out for the game with a right ankle injury. 
flags down. That may have been a quick snap by Ryan Carfley. You know, you get you get a new guy in there, a new quarterback in there, and you can start getting the cadences a little upset. It can cause problems for the defense as well as your offense. It looked initially like the defense had jumped and made contact. Or you get a, on the defense. You get a senior center like Carfley that when the defense moves, snaps the ball and picks up five yards. Next Saturday, some of you will see the ACC's leading rusher operator, Direct TV or the Dish Network for all the games on pay-per-view. Hewitt has yet to throw the ball. Deion Dyer is swallowed up at the 38-yard line. Merrick's Watson, the initial hit. Beerwin Eccles finished him off. Good penetration. I mean, basically got to got to him just as he was taking the handoff. Didn't even have a chance to get his feet moving on that one. And you're gonna really you're really gonna see a change in, in everything from the offense. You see singles come signals coming in from the sideline. But they're, they're Curry, or excuse me, uh, Hewitt does not have the mobility that Curry, Curry had. We asked him about uh, hit, uh, about him being the backup, and he said he is not definitely not at a Curry level yet. Hewitt to the air, swings it out to Dyer to the 35-yard line. Gain of about five. All right, time for the answer to our Aflac trivia question. Bob Golick made an initial. All right, you have any more guesses? Notre Dame was out. That, that didn't work. Alabama. Uh, I think service academies. Army. 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 All these are all the teams we used to play at Notre Dame. Air Force. Army, Navy, Air Force, and the Marines. And think Flutie. <laughs> Boston College. There you go. <laughs> I threw the Marines there because my dad is a Marine. <laughs> all right, third down now. And eight. A two tight end set. Shotgun for Hewer. He's got a man open. It's Corey Bailey. And Bailey fights for the first down. If North Carolina is going to rally behind Luke Hewer, they need plays like that from Bailey. And the one thing that the coaches have told us is that the receivers have been having a problem getting off of man to man coverage. And you know, they seem like they're starting to get some separation from the defenders now. As you see Bailey wide open along the sidelines, basically just get, catch the ball, focus, and see how many yards you can get after you catch it. Though Heward might not be at Curry's level in running the team, he may be a, a more polished passer in the pocket. He comes from a family of quarterbacks. Dyer breaks through. Deion Dyer inside the 15. He's down to the 10 yard line. What a run. You know, I was going to say we're going to see much more traditional type of offense with Hewitt in there because he's not going to be running around and traipsing around. He'll stay in the pocket, as you said, Rich. Watch this straight dive on a high formation. And he's just so big that these Georgia Tech defenders are going to have to learn right away that by laying your arm out there in front of them, it's going to do nothing except getting your arm ripped off. Saunders left side. He's tripped up. Gunther Kreisen, the redshirt sophomore, made the stop. It'll bring up second down. The Yellow Jacket defense has not been that large today. Saunders, big hole, five, down to the three, close to the first down. Chris Young, the stop. You know, when Saunders came in, he was actually came in and started as a fullback. They converted him to tailbacks. They were trying to find the right combination. Now, when you put Saunders next to Dyer, you see there, there's a difference in size. Dyer's much larger. But, uh, you know, although he doesn't have the speed to get outside, watch the moves inside. He has the moves and the little spin to make people miss and pick up the uh, you know, extra two or three yards. Third down short. Luke Hewer in for the injured Ronald Curry, who was lost for the remainder of the game. Fumbled it, lost it, didn't get it back. Or did he? He did. The redshirt freshman fought it loose and got it back. And North Carolina will have an opportunity to at least get three points. And again, we talked about the connection between the center and the new quarterback. He pulled out before he had the ball and just kind of squirted out free. Uh, they'll get their timing down as, a, as the day, day goes on. But, but certainly something, especially this part of the field, you didn't want to see happen. Josh McGee now from 24 yards. And he hit it. The North Carolina Tar Heels are raining all over Georgia Tech's homecoming right now. 10-0 Tar Heels. 
A full house at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. The youngsters are on hand for homecoming. This city, obviously a buzz with the Braves in the playoffs, but to talk about college football, not just about those Georgia Bulldogs anymore. Georgia Tech at number eight in the country, trailing North Carolina here, 10-0. Des White, two yards in. Flag down, back at the 15. White got it to the 18, and I think it's coming back yep. towards the end zone. Flag got dropped right in there, indicating that uh, Mr. Hamilton will start a little bit closer to his own goal line. Joseph Ryder, the ACC crew, and so Mr. Hamilton will be backed up. Speaking of Mr. Hamilton, next Saturday, the Nittany Lions of Penn State will take Clipping. on Ohio State. On the return team, half the distance to the goal, first down. In Alvin, South Carolina. How many people are in that city? Uh, not that many. In fact, Pearson Prelo, who's a great player for Frank Beamer at Virginia Tech, is also from Alvin, South Carolina. Rodgers on the carry. Julius Peppers made the stop in you know, North Carolina. We talked to John Carmen yesterday, the big right tackle for the for the Yellow Jackets. He talked about how they're going to control the line of scrimmage, how they're going to get low, stay low, all the basics about blocking and drive, you know, control that line of scrimmage, drive the guys off the field. So far today, it's been that Tar Heel defense is getting the penetration, getting the, the swarm to the ball. Everybody is getting after it and trying to make the play. Hamilton from his end zone. To the sidelines, a strike that is caught by Kelly Campbell. Jason Horton on the coverage. That's an impressive throw. Really was. And, you know, and what made it was he the good react back. You know, he took it upfield. He's got that deep threat. Campbell's got that the deep threat with his speed, but you'll see him going up that sideline. He plants, and boy, he comes back. Hamilton knows exactly where he's going to be as he comes back for the ball. There's enough separation from Horton to make the play. Sean Gregory getting outside. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 27-yard line. A gain of eight. Quentin Savage made the hit. Bobby Dodge Stadium in Atlanta. Homecoming for number eight Georgia Tech. They are riding high. However, the homecoming plans have been adjusted a bit because North Carolina has come in and put 10 points on the board and kept Joe Hamilton and the nation's number one offense scoreless. Quick snap, flags down. And Hamilton, Hamilton is stopped but as you well. Can, you can see the beginning of that play. Did you? Offside, on the defense, five yards, first down. Carl Torbush knew coming in that his defense had a tall order in stopping Georgia Tech. 517 yards a game, first in the country. Mm. Points, numbers, man. first in the country. <laughs> 243 yards a game on the ground. 43.5 yards per game, or per point per game. Hamilton has yet to get loose, though this is a nine yard pickup. Quentin Savage made the hit. You know, one of the things about Joey Hamilton is he, he is unselfish. He wants to share. He wants he wants to do what he can do to help this team win. And that, that's handing it off, passing off, what have you. He'll do it. He's got to take more control of it right now. Philip Rogers. Good pursuit by the Carolina defense. Cedric Hodge, the junior linebacker, made the stop. In case you've just joined us, North Carolina has lost another linebacker. Mercedes Perry is out, joining teammate Brandon Spoon, who was injured earlier in the season, on the sideline. And there you see Cedric Hodge, who did a beautiful job of keeping, keeping that uh, ball from getting anywhere upfield. And Ronald Curry. Yeah, Curry out as well. Sprained right ankle. Will not return, they say. That throw is deflected and incomplete. And North Carolina's defense maligned as well they should have been. Ninth 
in the ACC in total defense. They only have nine teams in the ACC. <laughs> that's right. So that's not a good place to be. But you know, one of the things that, that Georgia Tech didn't want was pressure up into Joey Hamilton's face because he couldn't see over the guys. Now, if he only takes that short drop, he's kind of doing it to himself. Sam Aiken is deep. And it lands at about the 20 yard line. Young Luke Heward gets it again. North Carolina on top 10 nothing. You know, that, that would be a sad day if they've got to go down to number three. Heward, who was a high school All-American in Puyallup, Washington, played for his father, as did his older brothers. His older brothers went to Washington. He decided on North Carolina. Ronnie Robinson, a junior fullback, was out to the 26-yard line. Chris Young made the stop. What adjustments does North Carolina make offensively? Steve Marshall, their offensive coordinator, with Heward in the ballgame. They've got to, they've got to get traditional. I mean, they, they know that they don't have the mobility and the and the, the, the free-form thinking that Curry had with being able to get out of the pocket. The advantage is that if you want to call an advantage, is the offensive line now knows where the quarterback's going to be. They can make a sound pocket for him to work out of. Faced with third and four. Heward. The pocket expires. As does Heward at the 27-yard line. Funny I should bring a pocket, huh? <laughs> the collapse around him. He did have time. Yeah. But once again, it goes back to what we said earlier. Marshall felt that a lot of the sacks came from receivers not getting separation, not getting open, and the quarterback basically having nowhere to throw it. Des White dropped the football. It's loose. North Carolina's got it. How about that? Greg Harris made a huge play. Not, not just a, play, a huge play in recovering, but his first move was to hit Des White. Clear him out of the way so he could actually make, make a play on the ball himself. And he just scooped up the fumble himself. Marvius Hester actually the one that fumbled it. And a huge play by Harris. Yeah, let's, let's watch it here. You're going to see Marvius go right through his arms as the ball kicks loose. Here comes Harris. His first move, get, get Marvius out of the way. Then go for the ball. Beautiful awareness. I'll tell you what, you don't rarely see, I mean, you rarely see that kind of awareness in a young kid. And the Tar Heels are right back in business. At the Georgia Tech 16, three Georgia Tech turnovers. Saunders trying to get outside. He does. Great move. Close to the first down. Out of bounds at the eight. Jeremy Myers made the hit. Flags come down after the hit. You know, one of, the, one of the things I'm seeing that's really cutting down to Georgia Tech's pursuit, if you're watching this play, the North Carolina offensive linemen are doing a lot of cutting. They're getting down, they're getting into the feet of the defenders and, 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 and taking out that whole pursuit thing away from them. We have a dead ball, personal foul, on the defense, half the distance to the goal, first down. What I'm saying to the left side of your screen is thing Saunders goes that way. Watch these blocks. They're all cuts into the linebackers. Everybody's down on the ground. That defense has nobody left to pursue. And then a great move on his own by Saunders. Beautiful job for that converted fullback. Didn't look like a fullback there, did he? And you saw the late hit. First and goal inside the five. Deion Dyer. Deion Dyer won't go down. He finally does at the two. So he's a big man. He's not supposed to bounce it outside. <laughs> Good try though. But inside was a little bit, a little bit covered up, and he tried to bounce it outside with all intents and purposes. Not what you're going to see a, a large running back like that do. But he picked up a couple extra yards. One thing North Carolina has are two very good tight ends, Algie Crumpler and Dante Finger. They have lined up in a two tight end set here. They're both outstanding blockers. And I think Finger just jumped off sides. Is he listening to you? No. <laughs> I doubt it. Hey, they're talking about me. Back 
yards to the snap. Ball start on the offense. Five yards, still second down. Second and goal from the two just became second and goal from the seven. Saunders. Anthony Saunders inside the five. The question here, Bob, will they let the redshirt freshman here throw it now on third down and goal? You know, so far, he, he, he really hasn't shown too much of what he can do in the air, but, you know, it's a situation that he has trained for. I mean, he's thrown the ball in practice. They know what he can do, and, you know, it's not like he's the, the only other quarterback out there. He obviously earned his second spot on the depth chart. Jim Hopper, the quarterback coach, signals in. Luke Heward on third and goal. No one behind him. To the corner. Off the fingertips of Sam Aiken and incomplete. And North Carolina will settle for a shot at three points. And so that is the question they let him throw, but you can tell his inexperience in game situations gave him a little bit of an adrenaline rush, I think, for that situation. That touch pass, that little fade into the corner, just a little bit long. Josh McGee from 21. He hit a 24-yarder today. This one is good. On another Georgia Tech turnover, North Carolina adds three more. That smile you see on Buzz's face, that, that big yellow jacket, is turning, is turning quickly into a grimace. Yeah, it sure is. Looks like a snarl or a grimace or something sad. The yellow jackets are down 13-0 right now to North Carolina. This is Des White, and he holds on to this one. Hester lost the last punt return. White bounces it outside. To the 38-yard line. 38 yards on the return for White. Good field position for Georgia Tech. Boy, they're explosive. They can be. And that's one of the things that they've been relying on the whole season so far. Des White, all it takes sometimes is a play like that to kind of light a fire on everybody else. Though North Carolina's on top, you have to know in the back of Carl Torbush's mind, twice they got inside the 10, and they came away with two field goals. Hamilton's throw. In traffic, it's incomplete. That's the first time we've seen Joe really force a ball today. Yeah, he's really been off of his game. They started the game trying to establish run, as we saw early on, and then work the pass into it. Now it seems like they're almost in a position where they have to pass the ball, and Joe seems a little uncomfortable. Second and ten. Hamilton to the sidelines. That's a gorgeous throw. Oh. Des White makes the catch. Jason Horton made the stop. Just short of the first down, nine yards on the pickup. And, and again, that shows the relationship between Hamilton and Des White. That ball was thrown when Des White was still holding on. Ralph Friedgen, the offensive coordinator. Third and short. Hamilton's throw in traffic is caught by White. Flags go down. White goes down. It will be a first down for Georgia Tech, regardless. And Des White may be hurt. A oh, nice little slant pattern. Very quick slant from the wide position. Watch me, he's just gonna come down inside. Again, good timing. Pass interference is the initial call. Pass interference on the defense. It's a spot foul, first down. You know, when the receiver gets his body position on the defender like he did on, like Des White did on Horton then, not much you can do to make a play on the ball. It takes a lot of finesse to be able to get your body in a position to, to get a hand on the ball, but for the most cases, you're going to see a guy almost come over the back most of the time and get the, and draw the penalty. Just a minute left in his first half. Carl Torbush right now is not happy with the officials. 
Both of those flags came right out in front of the Carolina bench. And the discussion is over. <laughs> well, it was a discussion. I think he had some things to get off his Pass chest. interference on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. His defense has played very well against Joe Hamilton and the Yellow Jackets. And now George O'Leary's <laughs> not happy. Well, coming up on the Valvoline Halftime 99, John Saunders, Terry Bowden, all the highlights, all the scores from the wild games and many things that have happened already in college football today. Curious to hear what Coach Bowden has to say about this ball game as well. Hamilton going deep. Got it in. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Kelly Campbell. Oh, man. We may have not seen a jo an explosive Joe Hamilton all day, but that was a beautiful pass. Right on target to Kelly Campbell. One of the things Carl Torkel has talked about was the fact that that mismatch between Georgia Tech's receivers and his quarterback was something he was not happy about. And Georgia Tech gets on the board with just 49 seconds left in this half. Straight drop back. He knows where he's going all the way. A little fake pump. He didn't have to look. Campbell just gave it kind of a little, little turn and go. Jason Horton bit on it. Campbell just used his speed flat out to the end zone. And boy, that ball caught him right in stride. Hometown kid from Atlanta, Kelly Campbell. And Joe Hamilton has his 11th touchdown pass. Look at Joe. He knows this game isn't going the way they had hoped early on. And uh, you get hoping, I, you know, one of the things, let me state an obvious fact here, as a offense that's behind, a team that's behind, right, a score like this right before halftime yes, gives you a little bit something, a little bit, a little bit something to talk about in the locker room, a little bit of impetus, a little bit of excitement, and uh, it put, basically puts you within three points, uh, six points at this point. And as I'm touched upon, the opportunity for North Carolina to get it in the end zone, twice they were unable to do so inside the 10. Yeah, they had one good drive early on, but all the other all the other scoring drives came on short field situations on turnovers. Corey Bailey, flag down, back up field. Bailey is down at the 18-yard line. It's going to be holding on, on North Carolina. One thing Joe Hamilton does very well is throw the deep ball. Mm -hmm. Take a look at it one more time. And, and look, a little fake pump there. And no effort to it. Did you see that? You know, some people when they talk about when they talk about a, a running quarterback, he doesn't want to get categorized that way because with the running quarterback tag comes the maybe not a strong arm. He makes up for it with the running ability. Well, that's not the case with Joe Hamilton. He can stand. If they made him sit down or stand back there and not move from the pocket, he can throw it just as well. I don't know about sitting down, but you know what I'm trying to say. Interesting sequence here. 43 seconds left. Georgia Tech has all three timeouts left. North Carolina keeps it on the ground. Saunders fights his way out to the 18-yard line, and that may change North Carolina's mind about burning those timeouts. Tony Robinson made the stop. Yeah, I think that being this deep in their own territory, North Carolina doesn't want to get the ball up in the air, especially with a backup quarterback, and get a, a chance of there being a turnover and giving Georgia Tech a chance to go into the locker room with a lead. 
Luke Heward playing in place of Ronald Curry left the ball game with a sprained ankle in the first quarter. And the red shirt freshman right now takes over with North Carolina on top. Interesting one going in Atlanta. Number eight, Georgia Tech down 13 7 after this. Soft turnovers, obviously the big ones. Total yardage, North Carolina's moved the football pretty well. The one thing that's really sticking out in my mind is that 139 yards rushing by the Tar Heels, when the coaches themselves admitted that their tailback situation, the running back situation, quote, was tenuous at best. George O'Leary did not show a whole lot of concern in the first half, but I'm sure his halftime speech was an emotional one. Carl Torbush, his team is ahead 13 to 7. And if you've just joined us, he's lost Ronald Curry for the rest of the ballgame with a sprained ankle. He's lost his starting middle linebacker, Mercedes Perry, with a shoulder injury for the rest of the ballgame. But the Tar Heels are still on top. This is Corey Bailey, and he goes down at the 18-yard line. Luke Hewards, who comes from a quarterback family, the redshirt freshman will take over. Let's revisit our Dell game solutions, Bob. North Carolina's offense, they wanted to get better production from the wide receivers. So far, it's been the run game that has kept them alive. They've cut down on turnovers. They have none today, but they're forcing them on the other side. And Georgia Tech's defense contained Curry while he is out with the injury, so that's a new point at this point. And they want to force three, some three and outs. Not they're not doing so good on that. Uh, Georgia Tech is moving the ball a little bit. Luke Hewer, Saunders, out to the 22-yard line. Saunders had 59 yards on nine carries in the first half. Cured a redshirt freshman, arrived on campus last year when Oscar Davenport was the starter. Davenport was injured, Curry became the starter, and Heward was the quarterback of the future. Well, all of a sudden, the future is today here in Atlanta. Ronald Curry, with an ankle injury, is out for the rest of the ball game. No further word on the seriousness of that injury. Heward has had a year in the system to learn. He's in trouble here. He'll tuck it. He's a big kid, 6'4", 215, and down he goes at the 27-yard line. Well, I bet the coaches will have a talk with him as much as he wanted to get some extra yardage. When you're down to your number two quarterback, don't put yourself in a position to take the big shot. And he just, instead of going down, sliding, diving head first, anything to take the, 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 the good hit, he puts his shoulder down and tries to bowl the defender over. And they plan him. His oldest brother, Damon, was the leading passer in the University of Washington history. His other brother, Brock, broke that record. <laughs> but this youngster, Luke, decided to go to North Carolina. And he's faced with a third down and short. Saunders lost the ball, got it back, and that may have prevented him from picking up the first yeah, down. Definitely did. That ball popped out. Good awareness to pull it back in, but all his upfield momentum was gone. Point that the Yellow Jacket defenders were able to keep him from crossing that, that first down marker. Yeah, it looks like they're going to measure it anyway, but this is a little bit different than how the game started in the beginning. Let's take a look at it one more time. You'll see Saunders get the ball from the tailback position as he goes to tuck it away, pops up, grabs it real quick, but at that point, he's not looking downfield. He's not looking for the hole. He's not looking for the cut. He's looking for the ball. Chris Young made the stop. Saunders had a hole. Carl Torbush is going to have to punt the football. And I don't care if that was a half an inch, a quarter of an inch. You're going to get rid of that ball, get it out of that side of the field. And make Georgia Tech, who has been relatively ineffective, I say relatively, compared to what they've done in the past, make them work the long field. Brian Schmitz will punt to Marvius Hester, who has fumbled twice. But George O'Leary is showing some confidence in putting Hester back there again. And it pays off. Hester is out across the 40. Georgia Tech has excellent field position. Their first drive of the second half is coming up. Mercedes Perry, who left early in the ball game with a shoulder injury, has put the pads back on, and we're told he may try to come back in. Middle linebacker for North Carolina. Joe Hamilton and the Yellow Jackets. 
Hamilton, lots of time, going deep. Campbell, go! He'll score! Touchdown, Georgia Tech! caught the touchdown pass as you're right near the end of the first half first play upstairs the extra point is good and all of a sudden Georgia Tech is on top 14 13 you know one of the things too that North Carolina wanted to do wanted to do was get pressure in his face because he's only 5 10 they think it would block his view they get some pressure in his face but look at how perfectly this ball is thrown to Campbell I mean there, there is there is absolutely nothing they could have done different on that play to make it any better a play caught him absolutely on stride look at Joey Hamilton he knows they're starting to open it up 14 13 Georgia Tech over North Carolina he knows the score is starting to, to go the way it's supposed to in their minds. He hit Campbell on a 47 yarder, and that was a 59 yarder. 121 yards in the last two plays combined for George O'Leary's Yellow Jackets. My goodness. The problem now for the Tar Heels is with, with Curry out, they don't have the, the unpredictability of offense that they have when Curry's in there. Luke Hewitt is a guy who's going to sit, although we saw him try to run the ball. He's not one of those guys that's going to get you a whole lot of extra yards, and uh, you know, and he's going to be a pocket guy. So there, there isn't that explosive big play potential that you had with Curry. Bailey watches this one skip through the end zone. The volunteers and the Bulldogs hate each other. Yeah, yeah. Mike and Ron get along. No, they're going to play right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Luke Hewitt now. Over the middle. Algie Crumpler, the tight end, makes the catch at the 25-yard line. Matt Yaremovich made the stop. Now we've seen, and every time we've seen the Tar Heels, North Carolina, start a drive, it's always been very controlled. You know, it's taken them longer. One of the things, one of the reasons being is because we said before, they want to keep Joey Hamilton off the field, but as we've seen, you only got to put on for a couple of plays in order, in order to break your back. Now, so they will take their time, they will drive the ball, they will eat up clock, they will get first downs, and, uh, you know, try and move it the length of the field. That one blows up. Peace is going to throw it. He does to Crumpler. And Crumpler, who was not the primary receiver on that play, I can assure you, has a first down to the 44-yard line. Jason Peace was a great high school quarterback at Northern Durham High School. You know, you had to know something was up. This was so slow in developing, and all the Yellow Jackets had stayed at home on the back side. Good job by Peace avoiding the defender, and good job by Algie Crumpler in finding himself a little open space. But you're right, he wasn't the number one pr primary receiver. He was, <laughs> they couldn't find him downfield. 18 yards, a big play for North Carolina. Saunders breaks loose. He's had a big day. Anthony Saunders, the sophomore running back, a 10-yard pickup. Chris Young made the stop. That man, in two plays, has rolled up 121 yards in receiver. Five catches now for those two touchdowns. He's getting up near uh, Des White numbers. Des White leads the country in yards per catch, 30 yards per catch. <laughs> but North Carolina is on the move, just outside the... Georgia Tech 45. Movement. No flag. Saunders. Gain of three. The disposition of the game has changed dramatically since Luke Heward entered the ball game. It was his not to mess up when he came in. They had the lead. Now, Stadium in Division I. Bobby Dodd Stadium. 
1913 they opened the doors a year before or actually two years before they did it Scott Field in Mississippi State. Down to the 36. Well, they're chewing up the yardage. They got themselves in a essentially a 32 situation. Giving that ball up inside to Dyer. Oh, it wasn't to Dyer this time, excuse me. Oh, it was to Dyer. But good movement up in front. You know, they know they can get a couple of yards for him at least three just from body lane. Third down. Quick throw. That did not draw a flag, and it probably should have. It's incomplete, or rather intercepted. Ricardo Winbush, the North Carolina coaches can't believe it. They wanted interference. I can't believe it. I mean, there's been some close calls made, but that was blatant. Let's take a look at the, at the replay here. The defender. Come on, this is just a quick, just a quick out to the wide receiver. Quick, get it to him, let him make the play. But Jamara Clark was right there into his back before the ball even reached his hands. No flag. Now Georgia Tech right back at it. Sean Gregory out to midfield. Well, you talk about momentum, and, and sometimes it's it's an intangible. You can actually feel it here. Just the, even though we're seeing some good play by North Carolina, methodical play, you know, working it downfield, the explosiveness of, of the Yellow Jackets is really showing up now. Hamilton pitches off the option. And Gregory to the 41-yard line. And all of a sudden, we can see some flashes of the number one offense in the country. Yeah, they're not, uh, Hook came up to make the play, but was not up uh, anywhere near the line of scrimmage, about three, four yards downfield. Their run support on the outside is getting a little tentative. Remember, early in the game, the one thing that was working well for the Tar Heels was the swarming nature of the defense. They were all going after the ball. Second and short, Gregory again, and he's got the first down to the 39-yard line. Sherrod Peace made the stop. You know, the, the scary thing about this for, for North Carolina is they came into this game with a with a sense of bravado. They were excited about this. They were not letting themselves be intimidated. They had worked themselves into a mental state where they knew that they could handle themselves. Well, they've been they've been gashed and gashed deep on those two long passes, and now maybe they're starting to think about reality. Maybe they ought to think about a reverse. Watkins. Inside the 15, down to the 14. Perry Watkins, a redshirt freshman. 25 yards on the carry. We got a flag down, and unfortunately, it looks like it may be against Georgia Tech. And the sad thing is that it was away from the ball. It was a block or a hold that shouldn't even have taken place because it wasn't anywhere near where the ball was at that point. Well, now the Georgia Tech players are signaling that it's against North Carolina. Well, when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? Now, unlike, unlike uh, North Carolina's reverses, this one takes place a little bit quicker. The timing on the handoff a little bit better, and no run support up on that side. In fact, again, like I said before, nobody is being aggressively upfield. Nobody's coming aggressively upfield. They're all sitting and waiting for the runner to re reach them. George O'Leary and his offense are now over 300 yards, and they're on the doorstep, the six-yard line. Hamilton on first and goal. To the five goes Gregory. Quincy Monk made the stop. They're, they're doing it with a little flash and a little substance. 
lot of the just inside runs to, to keep everybody honest on the inside, to keep the linebackers from straying too far, from kind of keeping them from being able to get into to good coverage quickly. They've got to really respect that inside run game. Hamilton to the corner for White. Got no, he couldn't hold it. Flag goes down. A flag on the play. And look at it, Errol Hood's reaction. He doesn't look surprised. Looked like he got his hand in on the ball to knock it free. Let's watch. Little fade into the corner to Dez. Yeah, it wasn't a play on the it wasn't a play on the ball. It was he hooked the arm trying to keep him from making the catch. Did he hook the arm after the ball hit? I think yeah. he hooked it. Did he get it before that ball was there? It, it was very close. And the guy making the call was behind where he couldn't actually see where the ball was being hit or not, or the timing of it. Georgia Tech now with a first and goal. Hamilton has plenty of time to change the play, and he's going to burn a timeout. Joe takes a timeout. So will we. 14-13, Georgia Tech. Bob, on that last call in the end zone, we saw the contact, which appeared to come after the ball had arrived. But watch the right hand of Errol Hood. He's got it hooked on white. That may have been where the flag came from. Right. It was, uh, that contact that, uh, is free. Mm -hmm. We thought that it was that that was at the end making the play on the ball, but there was that wasn't the thing. I think that they called that hand up in the face, up in the shoulder pad. You're not allowed to be in contact with the wide receiver. Either way, I think it's a break for Georgia Tech. Will they take that break into the end zone? Not this time. On first and goal, the North Carolina defense stops him. Philip Rogers, the ball carrier, he met Cedric Hodge at the two. Billy D. Greenwood down to the bottom of the pile also. Now, if they're going to stop those guys, they've got to swarm like that. That harkens back to the way they played in the first half where that defense couldn't be stopped. Again, Rodgers, this time is the end. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets have scored the last three times they've had the football. Good execution up front on that. You see him? That offensive line just got down low, got under the defenders, and the linebackers just could not get up to make the play. Extra point, good. Number eight, Georgia Tech was down in this ball game, but they have rallied and lead North Carolina 21-13. Now watch the line up front. Watch the watch them kind of root hog out there. Now it's the job of the linebackers to get over that mess and to make the make the play behind the line of scrimmage. Now there's just too much stuff under their feet for them to get into it, to get up into the into the line. Too much drive on Rogers' part to get that touchdown. Now he looks angry. Yes. Now he looks fired up. He was rather deflated in the first half. It's interesting how that one look can be interpreted in so many different ways. Georgia Tech to kick it off now. That's sad. We're analyzing an inflatable thing. Luke Manje will do the honors. This homecoming crowd has a decidedly different demeanor in the second half. With good reason. Bailey to a knee. Without Ronald Curry, North Carolina is going to have to find some way to move the football. Jim Hoffer, quarterback coach with redshirt freshman Luke Heward. Now, remember, most of the, the yards, we saw at halftime the, the, the great running yardage. It was about 130 some yards in rushing that the Tar Heels had. Now, a lot of that came when 
Curry was in there. So they had to be, the defense had to be wary of Curry. Now that Heward's in, they know that there's not a much of a run threat with him, and they can focus on that run game, making it much, much tougher. Heward will put it up. Deion Dyer with a circus catch and a first down at the 32-yard line, 12-yard pickup. Isn't it amazing when somebody bobbles like that and they make the catch, it's called a circus catch. If they bobble and they drop it, then they just, they're not paying attention. It's not a circus drop, is it? No, it's never a circus drop. It's a bad play. That was a good play. Tar Heels could use a few more of those good plays. Dominique Williams bounces it outside, and he's up to the 37-yard line. Marvius Hester made the stop. Now, Williams gave them a little bit different dimension with his quickness getting to the outside. If you saw up inside, the linebackers, everybody hitting hard into the middle of the line, knowing that Dyer has been doing so much damage to him. And, boy, it just gives, gives the, the little scat back a chance to get outside a little bit. Heward took over early second quarter. He's put yardage up. But two field goals. It was Curry who had the 30-yard touchdown run. Williams to the 40. Two yards short of the first down. And remember, too, the good drives that we saw really put together by North Carolina came after the turnovers. Anytime they had to do a full field drive, usually came short in some way, some, some sense. It was the turnovers that really put them in a good position to make good plays and a strike and score early. Carl Torbush looking for his first win in the ACC this year. Third and short. Hewitt's going to put it up. Great catch, a tumbling catch by Algie Crumpler. His older brother, Carl Lester, has made a nice living as a tight end of the NFL. His father, Carl Lester Sr., was a great tight end. They played at East Carolina. You know, we talk about Hewitt being more of a drop back guy, but all you have to be able to do is move enough to get away from the defenders, to be able to get the ball thrown and throw it to your receiver, and that's exactly what it was. Now, of course, when you don't move that quick, he takes some pretty good shots, too, but he's still completed the pass. Out to the 47. To the 48-yard line. Early second quarter, Ronald Curry, who had a 30-yard touchdown run, scrambling, and this is what happened. Greg gathers in, pulled him down over his own ankle. North Carolina team, very disheartened. They felt they had something very good going in this game. We told you before, he will not be back. Luke Hewitt is going to carry it the rest of the way. He left with a 7-0 lead. Hewitt came on and helped them to two field goals. Right. But right now, North Carolina finds himself behind. Hewitt throwing on the run. It's incomplete. He was looking for Corey Bailey. Chris Edwards on the coverage. You know, one of the things about young quarterbacks and what they have to learn along the way is if you're moving, how to throw the ball. You know, they always talk about throwing off the wrong leg. Watch Hewitt here. He doesn't get himself set. Even though he's moving and you can throw the ball in the move, he's not throwing off the right leg. He's not planted. He doesn't get, he doesn't have good control of the ball and thus overthrows the receiver. Third and eight, one of three on third and long situations are the Tar Heels. He's moving again, and again he misfires. Flags down, he was hit late. Heward went down on a late hit, and I think North Carolina is going to get a first down. Big, big penalty for Georgia Tech. Well, when the other team helps you pick up some yardage, it helps quite a bit. Again, as we saw before, the same sort of dash, short dash, out to his left, letting loose. Ball well, well gone before he takes a shot. Personal foul on 15 yards worth. Nick Rogers. The sophomore defensive end. Yep. 
Heward from the 37. Dion Dyer, the big fullback, to the 34. Number 38, Dion Dyer on the carry. I was picking up a few at a time. The one thing I'm noticing, did you, you see this earlier, Rich? When Dyer was hitting the hole, he was hitting it hard. Last couple times, he's kind of pussyfooting a little bit at the line. He's kind of kind of tiptoeing before he starts to run. At his size and his weight, and with the acceleration he can get, he should just be putting that shoulder down, finding the nearest thing that looks like a hole, <laughs> and sticking his body through it. Six feet tall, 245 is Dyer. Ouch. And second down. Heward, Dyer drops that one. Third down. Hit him in a bad spot, as they say. Right in the hands. Carl Torbush called him maybe his best offensive player for a variety of reasons. Outstanding blocker, a very good runner, and normally a reliable receiver. But I think they're really using him a lot more today than, than they have ever in a single game. Blitz coming. Heward in trouble. Down he goes. Merrick's Watson and Felipe Claybrooks made the stop. It's decision time for Carl Torbush. This would be a 52-yard field goal attempt. And it looks like they're bringing him out. Josh McGee, his career longest is 49 yards. You know, don't don't think that even if they get the the points here, don't think this doesn't affect that offense. North Carolina will punt it. Brian Schmitz is on. Play clock running down. That one has too much on it. North Carolina gives it back to Georgia Tech, who leads it 21-13. Twenty-one thirteen. Number eight, Georgia Tech, was down early in this one. Ronald Curry call home. <laughs> Curry went out with an ankle injury early in the second quarter. Hopefully, telling the folks back home he's all right. Joe Hamilton and the Yellow Jackets take over. Quick throw, and it's incomplete. Not much has gone wrong for Georgia Tech in the third no. quarter, Bob Golan. No, it hasn't. It started off right. First possession, first play for Georgia Tech. Joey Hamilton to Kelly Campbell. Then comes the interception that, well, we had questions about it. And then the touchdown run after a nice drive, taking it down, eating up some clock. Philip Rogers finished it off. And it's Rogers who gets it here. To the 25. Rogers still on his feet. Finally comes to ground at the 32 yard line after a 12 yard pickup and a first down for Georgia Tech. You know, they're stretching that defense now by, by doing a lot of the option stuff, the pitches, getting it outside. That it seems like the, the Tar Heel defense may be tiring a little bit. Now they get out there. They're not, they don't, as I said before, it doesn't look like they're all chasing the way they were early. And uh, so they're working to stretch them and make them run. Where am I a little more? 128 yards on two drives. Hamilton. Look at him go. Joe Hamilton. That's the football. It's picked up. North Carolina has got it. Arrow Hood has the football. And he returns it to the 36-yard line. Cedric Hodge forced the fumble. Errol Hood robbed from the rich and gave it to the Tar Heels. Well, we're watching that and we're saying, now this is the Joey Hamilton that everybody expected to see. But we, but we keep seeing the drop ball. You know, he's dropped a couple. Watch here. Beautiful job of just keeping that ball, making people miss, pulling through. But Cedric Hodge comes in. Right there, 52, gets ahead in the arm at the perfect spot to pop it out with Errol Hood. Give a North Carolina chance again from the short field. See what they can do with it this time. 
Remember, every time they've had the short field in the past, when Hewer's been in there, they've only been able to get a field goal. I think the Tar Heels would take a field goal here yeah. just to stop this momentum. Saunders trying to get outside. He does. Almost looked like a face mask along the side. It really line. did. I thought that he got a grab on that, but that was, we're talking about stringing out, stringing it out. That uh, Georgia Tech D was getting some good push up field. Saunders just kind of bided his time a little bit, waiting to find it, and didn't find the opening. Figured, hey, there's a the sideline. I better turn it up field now. Second and four. Saunders, big hole, spin move. Wow. Still oh. on his feet. Piece of the 10 yard line. Unbelievable. Anthony Saunders, the sophomore out of Greensboro, North Carolina. And the Jeremy Tar Heels Myers. are in business. Jeremy Myers finally gets the tackle, but watch the move. And I don't even know why they told me told us that he used to be a fullback. Look at the moves inside. Making people miss the spins, the jukes, change the direction, change the speed. Jeremy Myers are coming from the backside to save the touchdown. Bob, here's the area where North Carolina has struggled. Yes. Inside the 10. Williams to the five second and goal from the five you know even though Hewitt is is a good quarterback he's still the backup he doesn't have the number of reps as the starter certainly that that uh, Curry had now the tech defense at this point can afford to play the run there's a little field there there's not a whole lot of room for passes they can move people up and jam that run game and make them throw the ball Williams still in the ball game behind Dyer it's Dyer and the big fullback to maybe the four. Now it's third and goal from the four. Now this is the same formula they've been they've been doing every time they've gotten down here. Run a couple of times and then try to throw the fade. I remember the last time they threw the fade into the end zone and he basically overthrew it. Jim Hopper signaling in the plays to his red shirt freshman quarterback Luke Pure. got to feel good for the youngster from the Pacific Northwest. That is not, and talk about not something you wouldn't expect. You know, they kept talking about here not being the runner. He's the drop back guy. He's the pocket guy. For him, for him to pull that quarterback draw a la Curry, I, I think it kind of caught some of those linebackers a little bit off guard. All right, same situation, Bob. It's a two-point opportunity now for North Carolina. It's as good as a fourth and goal from the three. They stack the backfield. Hewer. Man over. Got it. Crumpler. We've got a tie ball game. And I'll tell you what, you got to give it to that young freshman, that quarterback. He stood his ground. He saw the defender coming up in his face and had the poise to find Algie Crumpler and get that ball to him. North Carolina has scored 21 points off Georgia Tech turnovers today. Now, uh, what do you think the Dell solution for, <laughs> for Georgia Tech will be next week? Don't <laughs> drop the ball. Let's take a look at the touchdown first. Quarterback draw. Luke Hewitt taking a, well, kind of a half step back. Didn't really fool that many people except, well, basically every linebacker in the middle. Now, here it is. Everybody play action goes right. Defender right in his face. Algy Crumpler wide open. But you see that? He was standing there and had that defender coming up in his face. Going to make the hit. Heward knew it and still got that ball to him. Algy Crumpler with the two-point conversion. Georgia Tech certainly had the momentum in this sucker. I mean, they, in the third quarter, dominated this football game. We uh, just got some real bad news on Ronald Curry. 
ruptured right Achilles out for the season out for the season which does not make Bill Guthridge feel well as well the basketball, basketball coach, coach in North yeah. Carolina that's that's unbelievable so a rash of those around around football this year in all levels uh, Testaverde obviously Des White Des White across the 25 yard line for the game in your area but that Purdue Michigan State one's gonna be sweet out to the 32 yard line 21 21 number eight Georgia Tech and North Carolina all tied up in Atlanta ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC station ready to start the fourth quarter number eight Georgia Tech 21 North Carolina 21 Joe Hamilton and the Yellow Jackets on second down and four Hamilton is stopped at the oh, yard yeah. line and the ball's loose Tim, Hamilton got it back Tim Burgess blitzed knocked that ball loose there's Ronald Curry the word coming from the North Carolina sideline ruptured Achilles which obviously has him out for the football season and sadly in all likelihood out for the North Carolina basketball season well he's a sophomore and he's got some time but those are very very difficult injuries to come back from Hamilton Going on the run, and Des White can't hold it. It's incomplete. And North Carolina's defense, for the first time in this half, has held on downs. Well, but they, you know, they, they did it early. They, I, you know, I would imagine the coaches got together and said, listen, I mean, you, you had the enthusiasm, and you got to believe that now that they're tied up again, there's got to be a feeling of, of hope. You know, not that this the juggernaut Georgia Tech offense is just going to run and pass all over us. they got to feel, hey, we can, we can move on them, and now we can stop them. Sam Aiken, a freshman, is deep for North Carolina. Georgia Tech will down that football at the 27-yard line. We've got ourselves a ball game in Atlanta, 21-21. The Georgia Tech campus right in downtown Atlanta. Georgia Tech, North Carolina, 21-21. Luke Heward, the redshirt freshman quarterback, hands it off to Dominique Williams. Out to the 34-yard line. Bobby Dodd Stadium where the number eight team in the country Georgia Tech came out and fell behind North Carolina and then behind Joe Hamilton rallied North Carolina lost their talented quarterback Ronald Curry a ruptured Achilles tendon he's out for the season but redshirt freshman Luke Heward has rallied the troops and tied this ball game at 21 apiece Well, they were in a, a second and four situation, and looks like a delay of game is going to put them back. Well, they stopped the play with a flag, and I think they picked the ah. flag up. I think maybe the clock wasn't working on that one. Yeah, the, the play clock apparently misfired, so the redshirt freshman gets a reprieve. And it's still second and four. Williams. Williams is loose. And Dominique Williams is inside the Georgia Tech 45-yard line. 22 yards on the carry. Nice job. Nice job on the cutback. Hey, he didn't he, he didn't hesitate at all. Watch him. He'll take the ball starting off to the left. He sees everybody flowing. Boom, he's cutting back. He sees the overplay, and he finds that backside wide open and goes for it. Williams again. To the 41-yard line, we head to the studios in John Saunders. John? Thanks, John. Today in Atlanta, North Carolina trying to pull an upset. Luke Heward at quarterback. The pitch to Williams. Dominique is outside. 
He's to the 30 and out of bounds at the 26 yard line. Jeremy Myers made the stop. Dominique Williams, the sophomore out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. And at the end of that play, he kept heading to the sidelines. Number 32, Ronnie Robinson got out there and essentially took out the last, right there, took out the last run support on the outside, giving Dominique Williams a little bit more room to pick up that extra yardage. Good block out there. You touched upon it twice today. The North Carolina coaches told us in our meetings they did not have much of a running game. <laughs> Either they've solved the problem in a day or they weren't truthful. <laughs> Luke Hewitt is going to run it. And he's inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. He picks up eight on that first down scramble. 260 yards rushing for North Carolina in the ball game. I, I, you know, I don't want to call them liars. No, don't. I, I won't. But they, they certainly, maybe they underestimated themselves. Let's put it that way. How's that sound? But Carl Torbush told us, look, we are better than our record, but we have yet to prove that, and we need desperately to do so. I think they're doing so right now. Saunders. Saunders has had quite a day. He's over 100 yards, and he's to the 10-yard line. Anthony Saunders, the sophomore out of Greensboro. Let's take a look at what he's done today so far. Besides that last play, this guy has been all over the place. Finding the open hole, the spins, the jukes. Taking inside runs and finding little cracks, spinning, making people miss. Great he job. Was, he was averaging just 31 yards per game coming in as he limps off. He's at 113. It's the first time a Tar Heel has been over 100 this year. Dion Dyer. Dyer fights his way to the 11. Second down and 10. Chris Young made the first hit. There, there's Saunders on the sideline to take a look at him. Now, this could just be cramping, you know, because obviously when he's over 100 yards, they haven't been running that much. So they take a look at him on the sidelines, and, you know, they've all, basically all around their backfield, they've had success. Anthony Saunders, Dyer, uh, Williams, they've, they've all been pretty good coming out of the blocks. Second and 10. Dominique Williams, big hole to the six, and an interesting play call now on third down and about five. Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevy player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Beginning this year, Chevrolet will also donate two $1,000 high school scholarships. Luke Muir on third down and six. In trouble. Down he goes. Matt Yuremovich. He's the guy right up the book, right up the middle. Right up the middle. Watch right you can see him. He's coming right through the middle. Nobody picked him up. Looked like Dominic Williams had uh, had had picked up on any blitzers and he was to the outside. Mr. Renovich. Josh McGee from 36 yards. Josh McGee from 36 yards gives North Carolina the lead. Three for three today is McGee. Guess what? North Carolina on top by three. Georgia Tech is number eight in the country. On a roll. North Carolina came limping in at one and three. And looking here, with 9.19 left in the ball game, North Carolina has a three-point lead over Georgia Tech without Ronald Curry, who has left the ball game and in all likelihood is out for not only the football season, but also the basketball season with a ruptured Achilles. That's the report we've received from the Sports Information Department at North Carolina. Des White goes to a knee. Joe Hamilton is a guy that certainly, with the happenings down at Florida State and Peter Warwick has all of a sudden 
come front and center mm -hmm. in the Heisman Trophy race. They have promoted him for the Heisman. The funny thing about this is Georgia Tech has never had a Heisman Trophy winner. Oh, really? Oh, they've had a Heisman. In oh. fact, they've had the Heisman. <laughs> John Heisman was a coach here a long time ago. And they named the award after him. He was such a good coach. Hamilton now trying to go to work. Quick throw and a catch. Russell Matville. Or rather, Conrad Andrzejewski, the tight end. And Andrzejewski is out of bounds at the 31. First down on an 11-yard pickup. Now, to follow up on that, Heisman was actually the coach of the team that has scored the highest, more points than anybody in college history. He beat a, a, a school named Cumberland 222 to nothing. Mm. In retaliation, I guess, for Cumberland winning a baseball game 22 to nothing the year previous. Of course, if you talk baseball around here, Atlantans are pretty darn happy. The Braves today, in case you have missed it, have defeated the Houston Astros and won that series. Three games to one. Hey, there's a bee in your face. Oh, wait, never mind. The Yellow Jackets on homecoming. Well, they're moving. The Yellow Jackets are moving. Joey Hamilton taking that last one himself, trying to spark this team. They got plenty of time to get it downfield, especially when these guys work. Ten seconds is about enough these guys need. Hamilton over the middle. Tremendous play. Errol Hood again. What a play. I mean, talk about great placement by Errol Hood. He, he was trailing right there, center of your screen, trailing and steps right in front, gets a hand on the ball right before the catch. Flag down in the backfield. Hamilton may have been hit late. He was. Oh. Rushing the passer. On the defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Now, we, we saw what happened downfield. Let's see what happened in the, in the backfield. Joe Hamilton dropping back. Yeah, right there. Boy, Quincy I don't know. Monk. Now, it was, it, Quincy Bate looked like it took about a step and a half, two steps before he, after the ball was thrown. I guess a Heisman contender gets that call. <laughs> he still has it. He's looking for Des White deep. <laughs> down he goes. The jump pass apparently not in his arsenal. Up and down. That's a travel. Boy, is he, uh, you know, he's really elusive. Certainly the end of the play didn't, didn't get them anything, but talk about being elusive or survival, one of the two. Errol Hood once again coming up and making that play. Watch him here. Watch him just making people miss on this play action end the round. Makes Burgess miss. Makes Stewart miss. Makes everybody miss except Errol Hood. Had Burgess not been there, Des White was wide open. This is Philip Rogers, and he's escorted out of bounds. Antoine Black, who right now is the backup quarterback for North Carolina, made the stop. ABC Sports presentation. Oh, movie. I can only imagine what the bonus footage is going to look like. I'm surprised you did not have a starring role in it. <laughs> I'm retired, man. <laughs> Third down now and seven. Georgia Tech struck like lightning on the final play, their final play of the second half, their first play of the third quarter. Kelly Campbell, 47 yards from Joe Hamilton. And then a 59-yarder. That opened the second half. He's only attempted four passes in the half. And that's Campbell in motion. His big play guy. Going deep for Des White. It's picked. Flag is down. Anthony Anderson made the interception, but I think North Carolina is going to get an interference. On a huge interference call early in this second half in the end zone gave Georgia Tech a first and goal they scored a touchdown off it Anderson came over on Malay is wide open that ball was essentially under thrown and Anderson came in and made the grab which begs the question was it a catchable ball exactly exactly now but obviously we've got to look at it again well. and I think that may be what the officials are, are talking about right now they say it was catchable. Carl 
Well, Torbush doesn't like it. Let's take a look at that again if we can. The ball downfield. You're going to see Anderson coming over from the middle of the field. And oh, I think, yeah, it was a catchable ball, Bob, in looking think so? at it. Yeah. If he's able to stop, I think yeah. he's able to catch it. Yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to catch it. I still think Anderson's going to go up and make the, make the grab, but he definitely would have had an opportunity to make the catch. Either way, it moves Georgia Tech closer to the goal line. 29-yard line of North Carolina. Penalties have been big in this one. Carl Torbush hoping his defense can hold. No, they can't get rattled now. Just because they're in the 30-yard line, that Tar Heel defense has to stay focused and do what they've been doing and not jump. Movement. North Carolina says it was Georgia Tech. Well, they're selling it. It's important. And that's the one thing that the coaches tell you. No matter if you did it or not, you point to the other guy. <laughs> you make sure they just snap. think about it. Ball start on the offense. Five yards, no first down. Sold. They'll back it up to the 34. Hamilton trying to bring his club from behind. There was a flag still on the field and the officials had to stop play. Hamilton in his career has led a bunch of fourth quarter comebacks. And I guess that's the stuff that Heisman trophies are made of. Mm -hmm. He'll pitch it. Down to the 27 is Philip Rogers. Second down. Hamilton, the pitch. And Georgia Tech gains about four yards. Jason Horton made the stop on Philip Rogers. Boy, North Carolina couldn't have played that option any better. I mean, they were hitting the guy just as the ball was being let loose. Just a fraction of a second from being a, a good gain and being a, a substantial loss. As good a pocket passer as Hamilton in, mm -hmm. is, and he is, he runs the option very well. Yeah, sure does. That is a combination I've, I've rarely seen. And he runs a number of different types of options, which is, which is also very interesting. Third down three. Hamilton, a lot of time, going end zone. Broke it up, incomplete, Errol Hood. Who immediately looks back for a flag. There is none. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to get a little kind of looking over your shoulder now, wondering if anybody's doing what these guys are calling. Here's the play. Watch the timing on this. Just like earlier, times it perfectly, trails the man, steps in, and knocks the ball away with that front hand. Or excuse me, with the back hand. See, what they tell you to do is try and keep it. Oh, here's the field goal. Come on, Jay. No, he missed it. He's missed twice today. And look at that North Carolina team. They are fired up right now. They should be. North Carolina sitting on what could be a large upset in Atlanta. Bobby Dodge Stadium is sellout. Homecoming. But it's a concerned place right now. North Carolina with the ball and a three-point lead. Luke Hewitt, the redshirt freshman quarterback, gives to Anthony Saunders, and he's dropped at the 19-yard line. Twice, Luke Monjay has had opportunities, and this was a big miss. Yeah, he just pushed it off to the, to the right. So far, you know, they've relied so much on the other skill positions of their team to score to really kind of dismiss that kicking game. Kicking game has been big. Two fumbled punt returns right. have led to two North Carolina field goals today. Well, Georgia Tech is certainly playing the run. They are getting good penetration as they did in the last play. Dominique Williams. He's out to the 25. It brings up third down and seven. Now, Bob Golan, on third down and seven, do you have your redshirt freshman put it in the air? 
do you keep it on the ground and put the pressure back on your defense? I think you gotta, you've got to throw a high percentage. You know, drag the tight end across. Something that where you're going to get an opportunity to throw the ball down low where it's not going to get tipped up. It's not going to get stepped in front of. You know, make sure you're throwing it only as far as you need it for the first down. They need seven for that first down. Hewitt throws it away. That's an incompletion, but it's a good throw yes. by a redshirt freshman. Fine choice. Well, a very fine choice of throwing that away. And that's, you know, that's some of the things that they talk about with the young quarterbacks. They talked about it with Curry and kind of the difference between him and Joey Hamilton that sometimes he tried to force the throws, but he would made the right choice on that one. Marvius Hester, who has fumbled two punt returns, is back. Another deep punt by Schmitz. Hester is back at his 15. Oh! And a flag goes down. That's a, that's a three-point takedown. There's another flag back at the 35-yard line. Man, what a tackle. I mean, you dream about tackles like that. Defonte Coleman. 60-yard punt. Once again, they're getting halfway decent returns on it because he's kicking it farther than the coverage team can get down. Well, there were two separate flags in two different areas of the field. One flag back at the 38-yard line of North Carolina. The other where the return ended at the 30. Holding North Carolina. Face mask North Carolina. Either way you look at it, the news is not good for Carl Torbush. Well, they'll take the face mask because it was after Georgia Tech's possession. Well, they may make him kick it again. Holding on the kicking team. Ten yards, previous spot, repeat fourth down. And that's exactly yep, what they did. Do it again. By taking the hold, which happens during the kick, they get to run the play again. Let's take a, take a look at the face mask penalty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no doubt about that one. <laughs> yeah, that added. So, somewhat blatant. Greg Harris coming in and, boy, kind of getting a snag in that face. Makes a good handle. That ain't legal, though. That looked like a 15-yard variety. Yeah, it did, because he wasn't letting go. Which would have given them the football at their own 45-yard line. But by making Schmitz kick it again, Hester now is standing at his 38. So George O'Leary is gambling on the exchange rate here. This is a low line drive. Hester. He's loose. Flag goes down. Back at the 50 yard line. Hester to the 44 yard line. It looks like it's on Sean Gregory. Pretty much landed at his feet, and he got, got kind of a dis disgusted look about him when he saw the flag. That's a rather large flag. Point of foul. It's back at the 50. It'll bring it back Rocking into back. Georgia Tech on area. The on the return. Spot foul. 10 yards. First down. First down, Georgia Tech. They're down. We'll be back to Atlanta after this. Man, is 24-21, North Carolina on top of number eight, Georgia Tech. With four minutes and 10 seconds left, Joe Hamilton has the football at his own 38. He'll throw. He'll throw deep. And it is picked up. Intercepted. North Carolina has another turnover. Arrowhead. Wow. The fifth Georgia Tech turnover of the ball game. Now, Arrowhead had, had a couple of problems early, but man, has he played an amazing game. Great concentration, great timing on knocking down a couple of long passes, and the position and the ability to stop 
and to get back and make that catch. Watch this here. I mean, he is, it's all he can do at this point to keep up. But he stops, plants, and that ball comes right into the gut. Watch this. He gets behind. He gets behind Kerry Campbell. All he can do to catch up, both the awareness, the ability to turn, make the play. Ball was under thrown. Dominique Williams across the 20 to the 21 yard line. Well, you know, Rich, we're going to talk about the highest in the trophy and, you know, hey, how do you win this? Well, they've got eight people up, eight, nine people up in the box. They are taking that run away. If there's any success in the run, it's going to be, have to be the Tar Heels making it happen. Pure to the air, Crumpler the catch, and Algie Crumpler is escorted out of bounds. It stops the clock. Chris Young made the tackle. Third down and about seven. Well, again, we run into the same situation we did the last series for North Carolina. What do you do? You don't want to risk a turnover to an explosive Georgia Tech team in this part of the field. But you also don't want to just kick it back to them but with hardly any time taken off the, off the clock. You saw the timeout. North Carolina has two. Georgia Tech. Williams. Down he goes! And Joe Hamilton will get the football back. Greg Gathers made the stop. Georgia Tech, who had two timeouts left, will burn another one. So the Yellow Jackets are down to one timeout left. They trail by three. And we'll take a timeout. A good one going in Atlanta. Good thing I was born hungry. The Owl Garden. When you're here, you're family. Number eight, Georgia Tech, down three. Carl Torbush in North Carolina forced to punt. Brian Schmitz has had a good day, but he gets a wobbler off here. Marvius Hester will not field it on a hop, and it rolls by him down to the 18-yard line. That is a... No, no matter what comes of this game, Marvius Hester is going to get some, some instruction on the etiquette of punt return. The wind is starting to pick up here in Atlanta, gusting at about 15 to 20. It may have affected that last throw by Hamilton. But with three minutes left and his team 82 yards away, Hamilton... Oh, it's deflected and intercepted to Burgess! North Carolina has picked Hamilton off again! Good, good pressure up on the inside. Burgess right there to get the tip ball. Wow! We'll show that. We'll, we'll show you that one again right now. Watch the inside. They're running the game here inside. Ross McAllister broke it down inside. Got the hands up into the face of Joey Hamilton. Watch him inside. Tips the ball up. McAllister hands the ball. Burgess very aware of getting under, getting that interception. And a couple of yards. Williams. Wrapped up at the 11. North Carolina, if they get a touchdown, obviously two scores is very difficult to beat. Georgia Tech, remember, burned a timeout on that last third down stop. Look at this. Look at the numbers here. North Carolina, only one turnover. Georgia Tech with six. But how many of those have directly led to scores? It has been, it is about four of them. Four of them have led to scores. This is uh, in no way, shape, or form what, they, what Georgia Tech's coaches or players thought would happen. They are not that type of team to turn balls over like that. Second down. The big pullback. Deion Dyer inside the five. <laughs> Look at him. Clock's still running. Georgia Tech has one timeout left. It's third down and goal. When do you use that timeout? When they get down and on the run, like, well, let's see, it's at this point, third down, see how this one plays out, and then make the decision after this play. But the, while it's still third down and a shot at the goal line, let the clock run. Third and goal. Front row in motion. Hewitt. Dyer. Dyer did not make it. 
And now Georgia Tech will burn the timeout. Nice call, Coach Gola. You're quite welcome. <laughs> but the clock has not stopped. Look at the clock continuing to roll. They'll obviously put some seconds back on it. Chevy Tahoe, like a rock. North Carolina, with a minute 14 seconds left, has a three-point lead over number eight Georgia Tech. And they have the football on the three-yard line of Georgia Tech. But they're faced with fourth and goal. Ted Root, the defensive coordinator of Georgia Tech. Decisions being made on both sidelines. Well, at this point, a field goal is going to give North Carolina a six-point lead. Now, if Georgia Tech's able to drive it downfield, you know, they got a chance to win it. Now, if North Carolina decides to go for this, go for the touchdown, and that will put it out of reach. And it looks like they will go for the touchdown. Ronald Curry is out for the season. Not just football, but it sounds like basketball with a ruptured Achilles. Redshirt freshman Luke Pure has played well. If they do not make this, they'll be in no worse shape than if they kick the field goal. Fourth and goal. Pure bottled it. Dyer, he won't make it. Georgia Tech has stopped. Change of possession will stop the clock. And Joe Hamilton has a minute 10 to go. 97 yards without a timeout. Well, they have got a long, long way to go. We've seen what Joey Hamilton can do in, in mere seconds. They've got a long way to go, a lot of yardage to cover, even to get in a field goal position. Hamilton last year engineered four fourth-quarter comebacks. Clemson, sixth-ranked Virginia, 12th-ranked Georgia, 17th-ranked Notre Dame. Number two long passes to Kelly Campbell for touchdowns. From his end zone, Hamilton across the middle. It's Campbell. He's 20. He's 30. Clock will stop as they move the chains. One minute left. By going for it, North Carolina has left themselves vulnerable to a tie. To a tie. Hamilton spikes it. Surprising with a minute left. Yeah. Second well, down and 10. I think what Joey Hamilton is seeing now is that the North Carolina defense is playing back. And I don't want to say it's prevent, but they're certainly opening themselves up a little bit more. As you saw in the last one, Kelly Campbell wide open over the middle. Uh, if he get the ball to him and with his running ability, really able to do a lot with it. Hamilton, lots of time, got a man, a tumbling catch, Dez White at the 40, the clock continues to run. This is where that spike comes into play. It's now a third down. 40 seconds. Hamilton gonna go deep, Campbell, got it! To the 25! Joey Hamilton, Dez White connection, but when people cover Dez, <laughs> Kelly Campbell is right there to take up the slack. Clock will start on the ready for play. <laughs> Kelly Campbell suddenly drops to a knee, and I think the Georgia Tech wide receiver has cramps. And this gives Hamilton an opportunity to come out and talk to George O'Leary. Georgia Tech does not have a timeout left. Well, when Coach Tarbush made the decision to go for it on fourth down for the touchdown, he knew that there was a possibility of their making it down in field goal position. Let's take a look at the end of this play. It came down, looked like uh, 
looked like Horton came up on the back of his leg, maybe, maybe kicked him, bruised him a little bit. Georgia Tech has to be aware that they've started the clock, and I'm not sure they know that. The clock is rolling. It's down to 20 seconds. Hamilton will keep it, and he's out of bounds at the 19-yard line. 13 seconds left in this ball game. Quincy Monk came right up the middle, blitzed up the middle, untouched. Unfortunately, one thing that Joey Hamilton can do very well is make one person miss pretty easily. 13 seconds left. Second down, four. Remember, Luke Monje, the Georgia Tech kicker, has missed both field goal attempts today. Hamilton. Campbell. Out of the end zone, it's incomplete. That was very close. Take a look at it again right at the end of the play. Watch the feet. He's already stepped out of bounds before he's even got the grass, the turf. I would surmise that most of the kickers you've spoken with were not true freshmen like <laughs> Luke Mange. <laughs> uh, okay, maybe one. <laughs> Your point is well taken, though. Mange, when somebody talks to him down the road, I'm sure he'll say that. And I'm sure he's hoping that he'll be able to use this as a reference point. Georgia Tech, number eight in the country, needs this field goal to see an overtime against North Carolina. It is up. It is good. The freshman from Conyers, Georgia, hits the field goal. It is 24-24. And the gamble that Carl Torbush took by going for yeah. it on fourth and goal has backfired. Yeah, he felt that there was not any accuracy today in Monje's leg and that he would keep him out of any kind of close, close enough area to make it an easier field goal. Now that Hamilton-Campbell connection got them down a position and Monje, not only did he make that, but he made it with a vengeance. He put that through and bounced it off the back wall of the stadium. Five seconds left on the game clock. So North Carolina and Carl Torbush looks like they're headed for overtime. What, what an incredible day emotionally for Torbush and his Tar Heels. They've lost their quarterback, Ronald Curry, for the season with a ruptured Achilles. They had their middle linebacker, Merceda Perry, go out with a shoulder injury. They come out and take the lead over number eight Georgia Tech, only to see a Heisman Trophy candidate rally Georgia Tech back on top. And then the Tar Heels get off the canvas, take a three-point lead, Jay has just tied the game. So barring a kickoff return for a touchdown, it looks like a little overtime. A wild ride in Atlanta. 24-24. Georgia Tech, North Carolina. Georgia Tech number eight in the country. Just to refresh your memory, as we head to the overtime, it's not sudden death, the clock is off. Each team gets a possession starting on the opponent's 25-yard line. You repeat the process until the tie is broken. If you get to the third overtime and it's still tied, if a team scores a touchdown, they must go for two. Prevailing strategy on the coin toss. If you win it, you want to be on defense for the first overtime. Because then you, as a team, know how many points you have to score to win it. Same coin, head and the tail. Head and the tail. Who's called lights in the air? This was called. This ahead. What do you want? You want to play defense. You'll be on offense. Which goal do you want to play at? This one down here. You want to play down here? Yes, okay, defense over here, offense over here. Georgia Tech football. So North Carolina. 
be on defense. They won the toss. True freshman Luke Monjay, who had missed two previous kicks for Georgia Tech today. With eight seconds left, this to force the overtime. And the youngster out of Conyers, Georgia, just got it in. A long day of college football in Atlanta is not done yet. Number eight, Georgia Tech and North Carolina headed to overtime when we get back. Seventeen yard line. The initial possession by Georgia Tech. North Carolina will get a possession from the 25. Once George O'Leary's Yellow Jackets have their possession. Joe Hamilton and Georgia Tech playing the first overtime game in their history. Hamilton to the 10. He's down to the 9. Tim Burgess made the stop. And you know, looking at this, and looking at what these teams have been able to do in this part of the field certainly lends itself to Georgia Tech maybe having a little advantage. Which is one of the arguments against this format of right. overtime. Carl Torbush, who was also the defensive coordinator at North Carolina. First and goal from the nine. Rodgers to the six. Good job, Sherrod. Sherrod Pate, peace, staying at home on the backside, making sure that cutback didn't pick up too much. But still, a couple of yards closer to the end zone on the second down. Hamilton, his total yardage over 300. He's averaging 329, and he surpassed that today. Overtime statistics do count. Quarterback draw. Hamilton is in. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. And the Yellow Jackets score first in overtime. North Carolina, on their possession, must get a touchdown. Very, very nice call. Very nice call. Georgia Tech with that, and with his running ability, and with the way they had it spread out, the wide receiver spread, they knew there'd be a little room for him to maneuver. Monjay's extra point was deflected, and good. <laughs> My goodness. Nothing is easy today in Atlanta. Here it is one more time. Quarterback draw, look at that. Good pressure up on the outside, but that middle is left wide open. Safety's having to come up and make the play. Billy Dean Greenwood. Look at this. The center is wide open. You've got to stay in the face of this kind of quarterback. You can't let him have vision downfield, especially when there's only six yards between him and the goal line. All right, Bob Golick. Luke Heward, the redshirt freshman quarterback for North Carolina, must get a touchdown. Well, they've been running. Just staying very traditional. They've got to break that. Hewitt finds his fullback, Dion Dyer, and he's out of bounds. Not a big game. And Rich, I think you'll agree with me. They were getting kind of predictable down there. First and second down, they ran the ball. Third down, they passed the ball. And it just seemed like Georgia Tech knew what they were doing and adjusted their defense accordingly. North Carolina was playing with the lead and trying to run clock. Now they're playing for their lives. Heward, deflected, incomplete. A turnover ends the ball game. It's third down. Deflected, but still off the hands of Algie Crumpler. Also a little short boot back left side. The timing on the pass disrupted a little bit. Anthony Josephson with the deflection. Four of 17 on third down. Obvious four down territory here. Blitz coming. Cured. End zone. 
Incomplete in North Carolina. Is down to fourth down. Well, fourth down. Was about six, seven, six yards to go. The Tar Heels will call a timeout. This has not been a, a very productive area of the field, as we've said before. You know, it just seems that when you can't stretch the Georgia Tech defense out, when they have the ability to stay condensed because it's a short field, they respond a little bit better. You can't find any cracks to beat them on. Time permitting, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car post-game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. John Saunders and Terry Bob. Thrifty Car Rental post-game report. North Carolina has lost its starting quarterback, Ronald Curry. Luke Hewitt, the redshirt freshman, in overtime, is faced with fourth down and six. Georgia Tech's defense, with a stop here, wins the ball game. Either way, both of these teams will be going back to drawing board next week looking at some North Carolina looking at some very good things they did right and some questions about possession that Georgia Tech will have to look at here we go fourth down blitz coming pure throwing it's incomplete Georgia Tech wins it a loss away from this stadium but Kyle Torbush can stand up tall and his players can stand tall this next week as they look at what they did against the Yellow Jackets Georgia Tech number eight in the country now moves to four and one final snap on fourth down here it is he was throwing a little come out comeback over to the left side of your screen, but he threw it too far outside and low. Incomplete ball game. Georgia Tech beats North Carolina 31-24 for Bob Golick. I'm Rich Waltz. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence, Georgia Tech in overtime.